In class activity four, the input to a system is x of n is equal to alpha to the negative n u of negative n, and the unit impulse response of the system is h of n is equal to beta n minus one u of n minus one. Use the convolution sum to determine the output of the system y of n. Assume that alpha beta is less than one. So once again, we have that y of n is equal to x of n convolves with h of n, or y of n is equal to the summation from k equal negative infinity to infinity, x of k, h of n minus k. So y of n is equal to the summation from k equals negative infinity to positive infinity, alpha to the negative k, u of negative k, times beta to the n minus k minus one, u of n minus k minus one. So first we're going to make a sketch of x of k. x of k has a value from zero to negative infinity of alpha to the negative n. So it's zero. So at zero, we have a one. Then at negative one, we have alpha. At negative two, we have alpha squared. At negative three, we have alpha cubed and so on. Now, we're going to sketch beta to the n minus k minus one, u of n minus k minus one. Now there are actually two options for h of n minus k, so I will draw these separately. The first one is, if we assume n minus one is greater than or equal to zero, Then we have a leading edge at n minus one, where the first value is one beta, beta squared, beta cubed, beta to the fourth, and so on. The second case for h of n minus k is assuming the leading edge is less than zero, and everything else is a zero where we have one, beta, beta squared, and so on. So because we have two cases here, one with n minus one greater than or equal to zero, and one with n minus one less than zero, this gives us two different summations that we have to solve. So first, let's look at n minus one greater than or equal to zero. For n minus one greater than or equal to zero, we know that y of n becomes k equals negative infinity to zero because any other values are not overlapping, so the sum will be zero. So that is alpha to the negative k, beta to the n minus k minus one. So removing beta to the n minus one, we have times k equals to the negative infinity alpha beta raised to the negative k. So now if we do the substitution and let L equals neg equal negative k, we get y of n is equal to beta to the n minus one, the summation from L equals zero to infinity, alpha beta raised to the L, or beta to the n minus one, times the quantity one over one minus alpha beta. And this is the answer for n greater than or equal to zero. So this is u of n minus one. It's for n minus one greater than or equal to zero. So now our other summation for 
n minus one less than zero, or n less than one is the summation from k equals negative infinity to n minus one, alpha to the negative k, beta to the n minus k minus one. Once again, we take out beta to the n minus one, and the summation is from k equal negative infinity to n minus one, alpha beta raised to the negative k. So now we're going to let L equal k minus the quantity n minus one, or k is equal to L plus n minus one. So, so y of n becomes beta to the n minus one, the summation from L equal negative infinity to zero, alpha beta time raised to the negative L minus n plus one. So now taking out of the summation beta to the negative n plus one, we have beta to the n minus one, beta to the negative n plus one, and we take out alpha to the negative n plus one. In the summation, we're left with alpha beta to the negative L. So simplifying this, we have alpha to the negative n plus one, the summation from L equals negative infinity to zero, alpha beta to the negative L. So now we would do another substitution similar to what we did before, and we're going to let P equal negative L. So now our summation is Y of N equals alpha to the negative N plus one, the summation from P equals zero to infinity, alpha beta raised to the P, and our final answer would be alpha to the negative n plus one times the quantity one over one minus alpha beta. And we know that this is only valid for n minus one less than zero or n less than one. So we can write that as u of negative n. And finally, the complete answer is the sum of these two. So y of n is equal to beta to the n minus one over one minus alpha beta, u of n minus one, plus alpha to the negative n plus one over one minus alpha beta, u of negative n. And this concludes today's lectures on discrete convolution sum.